So, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Come on, listen up. You know, it's, it's good to be in a small group. Yes. Yes, very much so. We weren't all just discussing like how we're, we're going to get away from this just like five minutes ago. Yeah, okay, it's late. I got to be up early. Really? Yeah. How early? Five. Five? Yeah. Uh, I go and work out with my two friends. Really? Mallory and Allie, yeah. It's early. That is... I don't have to wake up early for that. I applaud you for your discipline. Thank you. Thank you I know, very much. Yeah, you get up at 5 o'clock, you work out. Who's not for everybody? Okay. But. Yeah, yeah, I have to get up early too tomorrow. Like 10 a.m. <gasps> get out of here. Get out of here. Leave. <laughs> like 6.30 is like my time every morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't work tomorrow, so I don't have to worry about really doing much. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> but how's your life tomorrow? My life is going good. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't have much to report on uh, on that end. Oh. Like, I, I, like I'm just been I just been working and going back home and. Is there any high or low? Not really. Mediocre. Yeah. It, well, yeah. It's just medium. It's better than bad. It's better than bad, yeah. but it's it's a plateau. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyone else high and low? Been a good week. Good. No. Nothing bad's happened yet. <laughs> yeah, I've had a good week too. Yeah. I got to eat a pot of cheese this weekend, so it was pretty good. Just a straight pot of cheese? It was fondue. You got oh, to pick okay. bread it and It would be meat. weird if it was just you eating a pot of cheese. But then they had a pot of chocolate with marshmallow cream in it, and you dip like strawberries, Rice Krispies. That sounds better than a pot of cheese. Yeah, that is true. Okay, but this cheese, it was a loaded baked potato cheese. So oh. It was like cheese, but with little chunks of potato and okay, bacon. And Ooh, you bacon dip like though? bread in there. They even had chocolate bread. It's technically pumpernickel, but everyone calls it chocolate bread. There's no chocolate in it. I like saying pumpernickel. Pumpernickel. <laughs> pumpernickel. <laughs> I think it's fun. <laughs> what is that, the Bugs Bunny? The pumpernickel? That's uh. <laughs> No, the Scarlet Pumpernickel, yeah, and that's Sylvester Scarlet. saying it. Yeah, I know that, but oh, yeah. Sylvester's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of those. It's, it sort of it's sounds like... one of those like, Looney Tunes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it kind, of, it kind of sounds like one of those uh, uh, fairy tale spells. Yeah, It's yeah. like, ah, yeah, Pumpernickel. <laughs> Every time, I don't know why. Every time I say Pumpernickel, I think of Prince Humperdinck. I don't know why. I don't know, it's one of those. Okay, we're getting off topic. I'm so sorry. I was talking about my, my pot of cheese. <laughs> this is not under everything under the sun. <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. So, today's passage was uh, Acts uh, 16, mm -hmm. and we spoke about um, uh, Paul visiting uh, the Philippians and how he went into the different. Um, and, you know he how he had different uh, pe people meeting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what stood out to you guys? I don't know, like Paul's faith and things like that, because throughout Acts he talks about suffering and having joy regardless of your suffering, but it's always so interesting to see him actually live it out in a way that he's telling people to live it out so he's the perfect example of what he's preaching mm -hmm. and the fact that he was beaten things like that and even whenever they're like okay leave whenever he had an opportunity to get out of the prison he didn't whenever he had the opportunity to leave the city he didn't because he's like god's ministry here isn't done yet and he stuck it out and i think it kind of makes me evaluate like my own life and what are areas where I'm just giving up and leaving on and where is God asking me to stay? Where do I need to stay in my life? Yeah. So I think that's interesting. Yeah, that is a common thing that we, uh, that we face as Christians, uh, that um, sometimes the way we visit a church or we're part of a church that, you know, when, and things get difficult uh, mm -hmm. What's the easiest thing to do? 
leave mm -hmm. you know it's rather than uh rather than sticking out and saying okay well let me let me work with these things let me uh face uh the problems head on and see if we can work something out uh sadly most of the time it's, it's just easier to leave um here however paul is giving us a uh, a better example mm -hmm. in that he stuck around for the sake of the philippine jailer, jailer uh, so that he would have the faith uh, that yes this is um the gospel uh, jesus's gospel is worth this In verse 18, you can really see how much faith Paul has um, because he just like the woman who had the uh, possession of divination, the demon of divination winner, he just said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. So Paul had enough faith in Jesus just to use his name and like just call that demon right out of her. I don't know. It's hard to find people around that have enough faith to actually say something like that, especially nowadays. But I mean, I'm sure it was rare back then as well. But for, for someone to actually be able to do that, I mean. I actually have a question. So we were talking about it in our small group. And it was kind of like, why do you think the demon was like, like kind of almost helping them out? because the demon was giving the girl the um, kind of like the power of fortune telling and things like that. And it says that her masters were very rich. And so evidently a lot of the people there trusted her and her ability to tell the future. And then she's going around and proclaiming like, hey, these guys are legit. And like, this is like, they're, um, they're the servants of the most high God. Like, what are your thoughts on that and why the demon was almost like helping them on that? Because I don't know if we even came to something Would on that. Do you want a person that's like completely evil telling everybody that you're a good person? I guess not, no. I mean, I think that's the easiest way for me to think about it. You don't want someone advertising for something whenever they themselves are not someone that's of good standing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, because it would be her, uh, Yes, the, the information is correct, mm -hmm. but at the same time, everybody would be like, wow, she really knows her stuff. Let's keep going uh, uh, for her, mm -hmm. you know, to her for, uh, for information. Mm -hmm. And that's just not, uh, that's not how it should be. Yeah. Yeah, because the gospel is not propped up by, um, by divination mm -hmm. or by fortune telling. Mm -hmm. It is propped up by... Uh, the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. One thing that I did find interesting is that she uses, um, the slave girl uses the, uh, an Old Testament title of God. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, because it, she, they say, uh, these men are servants of the Most High God. The title mm -hmm. Most High God uh, first appears in uh, Abraham whenever uh, he meets with Melchizedek yes. and he's uh, the, um, he is the priest of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. So uh, for her to say that, uh, you know, to use that title, it does infer that, yeah, it, it is probably true that she was indeed possessed by, uh, uh, by a demon mm -hmm. who would use uh, an old uh, Hebrew title of God to mm -hmm. refer to him like that. Um, let's see, I have a question for you guys. Uh, earlier on, Kevin uh, quoted Tertullian by saying that uh, the legs know nothing of the stocks when the heart is in heaven. What do you guys make of that? In light of, you know, Paul and, you mm -hmm. know, being in jail and stuff. I think it really boils down to where your heart is in kind of like in everything you're doing. So kind of like 
the generic example of um, like your mom tells you to clean your room either like you're you can either clean it with like a joyful heart or with like dissatisfaction and like oh just grumbling you have to do the same exact thing regardless but like how you act and where your heart is and so kind of like God calls us to go through suffering and things like that Mm -hmm. and like the world is a terrible place you're gonna kind of suffer regardless you know yeah but like where your heart is it it makes it as if it's nothing because you have that rest and assurance in Christ so I think it really matters just where your heart is Mm. yeah that is very thoughtful we were t- actually talking in our group about how um, Paul just, um, well, the jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul simply said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. And we were talking about how, is it just like how he says, just like believe. And there wasn't a thing of like repentance and things like that. So what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. I think repentance was part of uh, uh, the jailer's uh, conversion. It's just mm-hmm. that it's not as explicit. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, he went through something really uh, uh, catastrophic, almost you know, because he mm-hmm. almost wanted to kill himself mm-hmm. by uh, uh, because he he feared that he was going to be executed. Mm-hmm. However, uh, Paul rescues him from that by saying, you know, hey, no, 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 don't, you know, don't kill yourself because we're all here. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you could even say that uh, uh, Paul saved his life twice over, mm-hmm. once by saving, you know, by saving his uh, his literal life, and the other one by uh, by you know by his conversion, in that he saved his eternal life. Um, but yeah, repentance, um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. No, no, like we were just discussing it in there, but, um, kind of my thoughts on it was cause someone was saying like, oh, is it like just believe not repentance? But kind of my thoughts on it is like, I don't exactly know like the original like Greek text of how this would be exactly translated for the belief but um it's kind of the thing of like knowing you know your acquaintances and then you know your family and your best friends and I think he's kind of talking about like believe and know in a deeper level kind of thing um kind of building that relationship to the point where it's like it's almost included in with that so that's kind of like what we arrived at was rather than having that surface level of just knowing and I was talking about how um, in the Bible with Rahab about how the whole entire city knew about God they knew about Joshua and the tribe and they they knew God and they were fearful of him however Rahab was the only one who acted on her faith in God and therefore her and her family were saved. Yeah. And so I think it's believing in God on that level of believing enough to act upon it. And if he believed enough to act upon it, and he did, he let Paul and Silas come to his house. And so I think he took it to a different level mm-hmm. in the relationship. So that's kind of what we arrived on in our group. There is also uh, something that I just realized. Um, Paul didn't need to dis- uh, discuss the gospel from like the beginning mm-hmm. to the to the jailer because he had already told it to them. He was there mm-hmm. uh, listening to him when they sang uh, and the hymns that they were singing, you know, uh, talking about how you know, our hope in Christ and how we can uh, have that hope in Christ. 
this is why it's important uh, you know to sing spiritual songs uh, because mm -hmm. in, in the hopes that they were singing it uh, as a way of as a means of praise to God mm -hmm. but it also had the effect of uh, evangelization that they mm -hmm. were that because um, the writer of Acts makes a point that they were that the people who were there the prisoners were listening mm. so it is written with the hope that they would listen in faith that they would listen and say you know just like the just like the jailer what must I do to be saved mm -hmm. yeah and that was another thing we were talking about is like the craziness of how all of the shackles like they were all freed and yet they all stayed and yet pretty much they all put the shackles back on and Paul and Silas were the ones who walked out like I mean I, I, I think we're not giving like the rest I, I mean it doesn't really go in scared. yeah we don't go into death with it but it's kind of like that's also kind of crazy about how they see oh hey I'm free and they hear these two crazy guys singing mm -hmm. and then they kind of see the whole kerfuffle that goes on and then they're like okay yeah I'm putting this back on now yeah. I'm just gonna sit here yeah so it's kind of like think of the conversion that they also could have had and how it wasn't only the jailer who that could have been witness to the the slave owners, um, the owners of the woman who was possessed, they had to have some sort of acknowledgement that there was something like in the woman because they were greatly disturbed by uh, Paul and Silas taking, well, taking the, well, it wasn't them that actually did it, but through the power of Jesus Christ, they took the mm -hmm. demon out of her. Yeah. So they had to have some sort of acknowledgement that something actually happened whenever they said that. Yeah. And I don't know if, I don't know, there's, they knew that there was something different about everything that was happening then. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may not have actually believed in God or anything, but they still had some sort of acknowledgement, acknowledgement of his existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think they were just so blinded by their mm -hmm. greed because it's, it's it usually it says like and they saw and they saw what ha the miracle yeah. the miraculous act that happened and were amazed but it says and the owners saw that their hope of gain was gone mm -hmm. so they probably didn't even acknowledge that they only saw oh my riches are gone and which it, it is doesn't sad. say what happened to the woman after this no and i kind of want to know i mean what happened to her after that happened i mean like did they just like killed her after that? Was she sold again? Or was she converted? I mean... Mm -hmm. I would... I would believe that she would be converted. Yeah. Um, I mean, head canon here, but uh, personally I feel like she would be one of the people who would be uh, part of the uh, Philippian church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that in, in Philippians, uh, a special note is made for uh, both uh, Euodia and Syntyche to uh, set aside their differences and to, uh, to speak, um, I mean, to get along with each other. So um, yes, special note is made of, uh, of those two women, but it could be that there were many other uh, more women at that church and it could be that she was one of them. Mm. That's speculation though, but it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know, that's something I've kind of wondered about, like those who were demon possessed, like I wonder if they like knew what was happening, you know, like if they like could still like see what was happening but had no control. I don't know, that's just kind of a thought I have. So if, like, I wonder if she, like, fully knew the extent of her salvation from the demon and, like, how she was rescued from that. I wonder if she fully knew. I don't know. Mm. 
Well, I mean, if we take the example that Jesus had uh, with the demon possessed guy, mm-hmm. he wanted to follow him uh, after uh, the mm-hmm. demons had been cast out. And sure. And Jesus told him, "No, uh, but rather go to your uh, go to your hometown and tell everyone there about how uh, how you know how Jesus has saved you, how uh, how God has saved you." And he does. Mm-hmm. Um, in a in a in a later passage, uh, Jesus uh, passes by that area, and he's he is met by a large crowd that had come to believe in him. Mm-hmm. because of that one man's mm. testimony. Yeah, that's so, true. So yeah, I would believe that uh, if somebody is freed from the bondage of uh, of demon possession, that yes, they would be aware of it and that they would uh, uh, come to faith because of being freed from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In verse uh, 25 it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and uh, singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So it says that they were the uh, prisoners were listening to them, probably the guards too. So, and then the earthquakes and stuff. But they're like, this is this is not a coincidence. This is God. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. could have been part of the reason why he that uh, guard was. Uh, became a Christian was because he saw, like, heard them singing and then an earthquake happened. I'd, I'd be like, what the heck is happening? Mm-hmm. So. And I'm sure the guard had heard about God's judgment on those who didn't follow him. And so, and then after seeing, after hearing about the demon-possessed girl and how the demon was taken out of her, mm-hmm. and then seeing the supernatural event that happened within the prison, like, if I was that jailer, I would have been scared to death, honestly. Because I'm like, okay, well, what's going to happen to me? Well, and he was scared to death. He yeah, killed yeah, himself. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But I think whenever he was like, what must I do to be saved? I'm wondering if he was like, like scared just for his life or if he was scared for his eternal life, like his spirit in that moment. Because I know like Paul goes on and says, well, kind of gives him the spiritual, here's how to be saved. But I wonder whenever he says, what must I do to be saved, if he's thinking physically or spiritually. I would say uh, spiritually. I mean, because um, that was their whole content. You know, mm-hmm. their, uh, their, their message was about uh, how to be saved and how to uh, how there's life in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just I don't really see uh, a guard asking a prisoner, "Hey, what must I do to be saved or rescued from this that just has happened?" Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm leaning more towards, uh, yeah, it's the spiritual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the interesting things that I find is how how much they suffered here over the, uh, here in, Phil- in Philippi, uh, Paul and Silas. Yet at the same time, how later on, even being in the middle of uh, uh, of being in prison, that uh, you know later on, Paul would uh, write to the Philippians about joy and having joy in the midst of trying times. Um, yeah, like, as you can tell, uh, Philippians is like one of my favorite uh, uh, passages. So highlighted. Yeah, it's, yeah, so because, highlighted. Yeah, because it's all, I was noticing that. Yeah, it's all highlighted. And, and yeah, the, the thing, the key point of what, uh, Philippians, it's all about joy. Have uh, rejoice and to, uh, to, yeah, to rejoice in prayer and rejoice in the faith. Uh, How he says in chapter 2, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and in one mind. 
to do nothing of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. And later on, he talks about uh, he gives the uh, the ultimate example of Christ and how he uh, how he emptied himself uh, by becoming human, and even then he further uh, emptied himself uh, by dying for us on the cross. And so, how God uh, exalts him above every other name. So yeah, that was the uh, uh, that was the lesson for uh, for today. Yeah, uh, it's pretty interesting about how uh, how we can be joyful and even in the midst of trying times, and how we ought to to stick it out. You know, whenever things get tough, uh, yeah, just stick it out and see. You know, if God wants you to, you know, to fix it or to go through something. Uh, to do the work mm -hmm. and to uh, yeah to, to do the work in, in fixing it so yeah uh, does anybody have any uh, uh, prayer requests or final questions <laughs> no no okay. I think we all had a mediocre week okay so. <laughs> nothing too crazy okay Patience. Patience. Mm. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'll pray us out, and then we can be dismissed. Okay. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us another chance to read your word, to study it, and to to know and to learn more about you, God. Thank you because you've given us the uh, the example of Paul, of how he minister to the Philippians, how he was patient, even though uh, he was unjustly beaten and how he was uh, thrown in jail. God, we know that it was uh, for your purposes that he was thrown in jail. So that at the very least, one, uh, one family could be saved uh, in the expectant hope that others would have also listened uh, to the gospel and accepted. Teach us, Father, to follow after you, to uh, to pray more and to uh, to continue chasing after you even in the, in difficult times. Help us uh, to be more like Paul, and that he stuck it out and uh, worked uh, the things that needed to be fixed. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Thank you.